Single parenting isn't easy. We understand. Most parents don't plan to go it alone, but you can still make the most of this journey for your children and yourself. In fact, if you and your family are on that journey, this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Single Parent Advocate community and to our podcast. And here are your hosts, single parent founder, Stacey Poitras, broadcast journalist, single dad and friend, Daryl Moody. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. I am Daryl Moody, joining you from my home studios here in Orlando, Florida. This is the Single Parent Advocate Podcast. Stacy, you are there in Dallas, Texas, those beautiful state-of-the-art studios there, the Single Parent Advocate Podcast studios, Work Innovators, VentureX, the realm at Castle Hills in Dallas, Texas. Stacy, how are you today? We're doing great. It's a really wonderful Friday. It's like incredible that the rain has finally stopped in Dallas. It's been raining, raining, cats and dogs like crazy. So we've had a couple of sunny days and that's been cool. Actually, it's not I been cool, it's been hot. <laughs> I wish you would send some of that rain here. We just uh, actually had our driest May on record. Oh my Orlando, goodness. And uh, my grass is quite crunchy. I had to buy a sprinkler, but. Uh... <laughs> oh. Yeah, you have to keep keep up with that, man. I tell you what, between managing sprinklers and rain and all of that, you know, it's so funny. I it, it feels like that we're just constantly doing that, you know. If you're the type of person that cares about your yard, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well then there's that. I mean, there's people... some people that just don't care and they have yellow yards, you know, that's their problem. Mhm. Mm or is it was that zeroscape? You know where you don't have any landscape, it could be like, you know, I've seen it. There's a, there's a home in my neighborhood that did that. They basically mulched the whole yard and they've got some raised beds uh, and, and they've got basically fruit trees planted. I guess they're going to go for one of those victory gardens in the front yard. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm seeing more of that too. Just why even mess with the grass? Yep. 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 So it, uh, everybody's got a different approach. You know, our home has an HOA, so we have, you know, to do things, you know, a certain way, but is what it my is neighbor, my neighborhood was built in the 50s so we don't have an hoa and that was kind of i'm you know bought because of that reason i've never dealt with an hoa i don't really like the idea of that so um catch us up to speed I, you know father's day is is you know literally next weekend uh you've got a lot going on leading up to that where are we with single parent advocate so right now, you know, the Rack TV is still doing their promotions with Brent, who we met last week, and he's, uh, you know, still working on uh, raising funds for the dads. We've been reaching out to the dads in our group, you know, just figuring out how we can help them. And um, so that's kind of all taken care of. Um, there has been a lot of work done this last week as it relates to, you know, more inside the organization, like I was working on a, a, like a giving platform and uploading, you know, certain things, making things work. I've worked a little on the website this week and, you know, making sure that it's got all the information in it. And then, um, yeah, you know, just every day, you know, like we were talking about, you know, a nonprofit is is got a lot to it, you know. There's the actual hands-on help that we have to do, and then there's also the in-between times when you're really working on the inside of the organization to make sure that you're effective. And, so and if folks want to go to uh, Facebook or Instagram and and, and go to the uh, Single Parent Advocate page, you you actually posted videos of Brent <laughs> taking that pie to the face. I mean, several what pies. He had so many pies to the face. <laughs> And oh it was God. going I, all down. I don't know. I don't know that I would get on the internet and do that. But uh, you know, like I said last week, the guy has such a passion for single dads. I do appreciate it. Yeah, he he was something else. I I actually went home and watched, and it was right out of the gate, boy. There's a pie, and and huge thanks to the people at Rack TV who are the gamers that go on there and play the games with him. Uh, they have all raised, you know quite a bit of money and donated it. And so we're super grateful for that community and for, for everybody for supporting us. And we're gonna and, be and making if, a difference to dads. And if people wanna visit uh, that page to donate to that cause, it's uh, Rack TV at Twitch. Twitch is the online Correct. platform it's on where all Twitch. these gamers you know, post. I, I, can't, I, don't, I can't wrap my head around these videos of these kids who basically just watch other kids play video games. 
That's oh, and, I know, right? I mean, there's like I said, there's a whole website, you know, devoted to just watching other people play video games. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, you know, and you were in the you were the third person in the room. There's only two controllers. I mean, it was annoying being that kid, you know, but now people line up and watch it on line. Well, and it's not just kids, right? It's adults. You know, so many people are into to the gaming and, you know, it, it's a whole culture. So it's kind of cool. Well, hats off to Brent to, to, you know, devoting his channel to the cause of single dads and, you know, and, and taking a few pies in the face <laughs> on the way. <laughs> well, I understand there's more tricks up his sleeve, so I don't know what he's going to be uh, doing next, but we'll be sure and tell everybody about it so they can jump online and, and join in the fun. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So, so, you know, you've been talking now for a few weeks about, about single parent advocates effort for Father's Day, uh, and you're trying to plan some some outings, if you will, for some very deserving uh, single dads. Where are we on that effort? Well, you know, I, I kind of alluded to this also uh, last week. The dads are really needing help. Help as um, they look for jobs, help as they care for their, ki care for their kids. Um, so I think what we're going to do is just give them help instead of um, having a field trip. We are still going to plan um, outings, but uh, I think with everything opening back up, the sentiment of our community is more like, hey, you know, we'd rather you use the resources to reach into my family and help me with a problem, you know. And you had, and you had mentioned that some folks kind of, you know, share that sentiment with you that maybe, maybe now is not the time to plan yeah. outings, if you will. So yeah, bit of a, Get, bit keeping of a pivot it on that, keeping it real. Yeah, I think if I were to speak for all the families that I've spoken to, they really would like us to, you know, kind of keep doing what we've been doing. And then once we um, kind of get past this summer and see what's going to happen in the fall, then we'll have a Thanksgiving and Christmas outreach. We'll probably have an event for Christmas and uh, we'll be joining in uh, for Thanksgiving with some other charities to make sure that all of our families are supported. And then uh, next year, maybe we'll, we'll do some more plans to do some field trips like like we really want to do I, you yeah. know and i and i think i just kind of take for granted that there's a global pandemic going on because we're wide open here here in orlando so you know come 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 vacation <laughs> yeah I mean, I mean they haven't officially declared it over but i mean you know if you're vaccinated you don't have to wear a mask most people aren't few people still are but uh yeah i guess i just kind of take for granted that you know some places are still at limited capacity and that sort of thing we have um been open for so long in Texas. I think we're one of the first states to open. So I I haven't really, it, it hasn't really been a part of my reality. I did get my second vaccine this week. Okay. So um, I know everybody's got mixed reviews about that, but since I work with so many families and so many places, I just thought I needed to go ahead and do that. So I did and I'm here, I'm doing okay. It's awesome. I I haven't started growing a tail yet or anything like that. And I, you know, I got mine. I want to see my second <laughs> dose was six weeks ago or something like that. So it'll be good. It'll be good. So well, Daryl, like what's said, the topic today? What, what's on your mind? What's keeping you up at night? Okay. May, maybe, maybe I was stalling because I didn't want to get into this. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, we're going to talk about dating as a single parent, the challenges of doing that. Uh, you managed to get out of the pool and, and, you know, get married. So, uh, hopefully, you know, you can give me some some words of wisdom on my way through this journey. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a date tonight with a fellow single parent. She is a mother of two twin uh, 14 going to be 15 year olds this summer. So, you know, she's dealt with a lot of the things that I've got ahead of me. So, you know, probably doesn't hurt to, uh, you know, ask her a few questions along the way. But, uh, you know. <laughs> And nowadays, it's difficult to date. I mean, there's challenges about being a single parent and trying to date anyway. But, you know, nowadays, it's really hard to get out uh, and meet people. So, you know, you can take your chances and, and maybe by, uh, you know, by God's graces, you'll run into, you know, your next significant other at a grocery store or at the library. But most people, most adults nowadays are turning to the Internet, i.e. dating apps. 
uh, you know, I know this subject fairly well, uh, as I've been doing it now for three years, uh, <laughs> almost three years, two and a half years. Do but tell. I actually did an episode uh, on Not in the Mood with Daryl Moody, uh, available wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, uh, on the topic of online dating. And it ain't easy. What'd you come up with? Well, I mean, okay, so so I'll give you I'll give you my take. So uh, if you're going to use a dating app, obviously there are a variety of apps out there. You've got Tinder, which is just basically seen as a hookup app. Uh, from there, you know, they go to eHarmony, which is based on personality tests that you hope everybody is taking honestly. Uh, in the middle, you've got Match, you've got Bumble, you've got you know, a little closer to Tinder, you've got plenty of fish, uh, okay, Cupid, Zeus. I mean, there's so many of Facebook has a dating platform inside of Facebook now. It's amazing. I just so do you see the same people, Daryl, in all these different apps, or are they different people groups, or well, that'd I, be a mix? I can only speak for 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 the ones that I've used, uh, and I, I I like Bumble because. Uh, on Bumble, you know, you can match with somebody, but it, it's up to the woman to initiate contact. Uh, it's up to the woman to uh, communicate with you first. Uh, and I like that. It just kind of takes the pressure off because, I mean, you know, men nowadays, you know, a lot of them use these dating apps for nefarious purposes. They're not looking for true love. They're looking for some action. Um, so I... You know, regardless of what platform we're talking about, I think I look at the dating app as basically a great big mixer. You walk into a bar, there's a bunch of high top tables and you've got women standing at each high top table with a drink there. You kind of work the room, you meander around, you swipe on this one, she swipes on you. Oh, let me go over there and talk to her. So now you're communicating through the app, you're texting, you know, and it always opens up with the, hey, how are you? And it's so funny, women, women are like, don't open up with, hey, how are you? And you're like, well, how else, you know, what else do I have? So then you have to be witty. You have to come up with something creative. You ask them a question about their profile, something like that, whatever to get past the gatekeeper, people in sales jobs. <laughs> um, so I look at it as it's a big mixer and, you, and you're talking to somebody. And, you know, if you talk to people and, and you, you make a connection and you go, hey, let's get out of here. There's a coffee shop around the corner. It's a little quieter. Let's go do that. So now you've exchanged phone numbers. So you're talking on the phone. Mm -hmm. From there, you know, you, you, you hopefully you talk enough and you decide whether you want to meet in person. And from that point, you know, there's either chemistry or there is. So I will admit that the, the dating apps are an incredibly efficient way to meet people who are also looking for the same things that you are. But there are a lot of, you know, people use it for the wrong purposes, catfish out there, people catfishing and, and uh, stealing catfishing. people's identities and begging them for money, all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, you know, and it really, you know, you can make the argument that it creates a superficial society where you're basically deciding uh, on physical attraction first, whether or not you even want to talk to somebody. And you can argue the virtues of whether or not that's fair. But for the purposes of getting in front of somebody who wants to be in front of you, the dating apps are incredibly efficient. So, you know, and I've got, I've got, you know, my own experiences and stories and I've met people where, you know, we just ended up good friends and, and I've kept them as friends. And then I've had, you know, dates that went really bad. And, you know, there was one where I, uh, I, I decided that I was just going to bail. So I went up and got, got up and go to the, to the bathroom. And as I was in the bathroom, I realized that I did not have my car keys on me. They were sitting at the table. So I had to go back to the table, finish the meal. Uh, you know, so that you was, are that so was. passionate about this. It is so awesome. You know, I, I would say yeah. when I was still single, I was a single parent, you know, I was not in, I, I wasn't like going to different apps, you know, like maybe early on, you know, I um, I had a made a friend, you know, on like a plenty of no, maybe it was eHarmony. And I um, ended up being really good friends with this person for like five years. You know, we just traveled together and, you know, it was platonic, you know, and uh, lo loved um, traveling with him and my son. And we, we really had a great time. And then I 
if I really think about it more, I ended up having a lot of platonic male friends. You know, that was more my comfort zone. Um, I've always uh, danced for a hobby. And so, you know, I'm used to, you know, you have a leader, it's typically a male and a follower is typically a female. And um, so we, you know, we're always friends just because you dance with somebody doesn't mean that there's anything going on, you know, in, in your heart or mind or life together. You know, it's just a dance, you know, and that's a way to play together, you know, and I always say, you know, family that plays together stays together. I guess that maybe, you know, what you're talking about with, you know, kind of getting past the formalities of the app and trying to be more playful, you know, um, but I I was a tough nut to crack. I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't have comfort dating until probably my son was in his teens. And even then, because we were close and we were transparent, you know, it was, I always felt pressure like a, that, that I needed to make something work, even if the shoe didn't fit right, you know, on, I was so committed to making it work and, you know, I didn't want to drag him through um, my own imperfections or my own um, insecurities. You know, there's just a lot of things that get un unpacked whenever you are dating, you know, and getting to know somebody and they're getting to know you. And I'd read uh, several books uh, that said, you know, you as a single parent, you, you shouldn't date, really. You should just commit to loving your kids and, you know, making the most of life. And then, you know, after they're grown, maybe later, you know, get into to dating. And so I know there's a lot of schools of thought and a lot of people on both sides of that camp. I ended up kind of down the middle of the road where I, I dated a few people, but I dated them for a long time. But then when it, we broke up, it was like me and my son were having a breakup because he missed that boyfriend, you know. Right. right. And um, so, you know, we um, I would say I've dated before I got remarried twice that didn't work out. And then I had two or three what I would call uh, neutral male role models or, you know, uh, platonic friendships with men you know sure. um one of one of their sons um is still you know in my life and you know we we absolutely have to walk that line carefully you know what do you think daryl what how, what's going to be like when all of you guys uh meet somebody and you keep them what you know what would good look like to you um well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to eHarmony real quick because I have a great story about eHarmony. So I didn't make the decision to get on the apps and start looking until I got past mediation, where I knew the terms of my divorce. I knew there was no going back at this point. We're just waiting for the paperwork to get filed. I felt like at that point, even though it wasn't I wasn't legally divorced, it was probably safe to proceed with online dating. So uh, I, I went to eHarmony first, thinking it's got the personality test and all that stuff. So I signed up for eHarmony, paid my 30 bucks a month or whatever. And how great is this? eHarmony matches me up with my ex-wife. <laughs> so, and I'm like, and I look at it, I'm like, listen, eHarmony, I get it. We make a lot of sense on I paper. think there's I a song about me. that. <laughs> but it, 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 trust me, it's not going to work. Sorry, swipe left, you know. But uh, how great is that? I got matched up with my ex-wife before we were even divorced. Wow, that's crazy. Now there is there is a song about that. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to look it up and I'll email it to you, but it, uh, it's yeah, about please do. I, I like I pina. That. Yes, I like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain. <laughs> oh, I know that song. Yeah. <laughs> that's that about a man who was, yeah, going to date and he got hooked up with his wife so, so, and she but, got hooked up with him. <laughs> but to your point about about single parents and, and steering away from dating, I, you know, I read similar articles that said as a as a father of two little girls, I could not date and could not bring another woman into my life until they're adults because, you know, it communicates to them that they're not the most important women in my life and that this other woman is more important and they can be replaced. Um, 
Well, I'll have to tell you as a young um, as a young lady, you know, when my father got remarried, I did have a lot of jealousy, you know, early on, um, and I felt I, I did. I felt like um, maybe a little less uh, significant to him, you know, and, and he, of course he's getting married. He's going to put his, his wife first, mm -hmm. you know, um, now he's in heaven and she and I are really good, you know, we're fine. But I, you know, I think that's probably why they talk about, you know, maybe wait until, you know, after college or whatever, but that's a big ask. And people know that's a big ask because you don't well, want to be but, lonely. But, you know, if, if, yeah. if I'm being honest, Stacey, I, I like being a husband. I enjoy being a husband. I would like to have that life back. I mean, I wouldn't take my ex-wife back, but I would love to be married again, <laughs> you know, and, and be part of that dynamic. You know what I mean? So well, I would say, okay, so you've been divorced for three years now, right? Two, two years in April. Two years in April. Okay, so um, one of the other topics that you know about divorce in single parenting you know there's a number of ways people become single parents certainly divorce is one of them they talk about like however many years you were married how long were you guys married seven seven years they suggested that half of the time so let's say you were married seven years so you would wait three and a half years before you'd go to plenty of fish or eHarmony or something like that and just focus on you and your kids and all of that and maybe you have some platonic fun but with your your friends going out and stuff but really it's better to to hold off and kind of you know recenter. And, and, and i see that side of the coin certainly but you know like I said, I, you know, I, I don't I deserve to be happy? Don't I deserve to get what I want out of life? I mean, I, you know, I personally, I've been through a lot of therapy in the last three and a half years. I have been on a journey of self-exploration that I never imagined before. And I firmly believe that on June 11th of 2021, I am absolutely the best version of Daryl Moody that I've ever come up with in my 42 years on this earth. So why not find somebody now, you know? Why not at least look for them? I don't have to get married in the next year or two. You know what I mean? But I would like, I would like to be in a committed monogamous relationship with somebody. I'd like to feel like I have a partner in life, you know? Yeah. Well, and you've done the work, you know, you, uh, just to give you props, you know, investing in yourself, always being on the learn, you know, emotional, spiritual wholeness right we all need to have that and i think that's why you know experts or certainly a lot of experts recommend once you come out of divorce giving yourself at least half the time you are in it to get to know yourself independent of that marriage if it you know certainly to set up a new balance if your parents together right making sure that you're um, able, you know, to be the person that you would like to be with, right? Well, to your point about finding yourself, you know, I can remember when I was going through the process of getting divorced, uh, one of the things that I kept saying to my therapist and to my closest friends and people that, you know, knew me and talked to me about all this stuff, you know, I said, if I'm not a husband and a father, I don't feel like I have an identity. I didn't feel like I had an identity. I just, like that was one of the biggest things that I felt like I was losing was my identity as a husband and as a father and as the leader of my family. Uh, and I will say, you know, three years plus out from leaving my ex-wife, uh, I do feel more confident in who I am. And I do feel like I have an identity when my kids aren't with me. So, you know, I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'd say that I found that part of myself, but I, but I think that part of myself, you know, I'm more aware of it now. So we're going to end the conversation there uh, for part one. We're going to pick back up with part two, again, talking about dating as a single parent. We hope you uh, catch that episode. That's a hot topic. More dating to come. Ah! <laughs>